So I'm Kelly Gunther. I'm the owner of Gunther Group and the creative director here. I have a background in news. We have a, uh, it's a small kind of a boutique communications agency. And I have been doing video and visual storytelling for, I guess, in college. It was 30 years ago in college that I actually got hired to do my first professional um, uh, TV show. So um, we have gone through decades of changes and um, in the video and audio and even still photo business, there are crazy changes going on right now. So uh, on the advice of Chris Peterson, who is running the gimbal camera, say hello, Chris. Hello, hello. Here, I will we'll introduce you to Chris really quick. So I'll just throw myself in here and try to turn it around. And this gimbal's not working terribly well. So we're just going to mess with this and bring it up. This is Chris. Chris is a client of mine. Howdy, howdy. Okay, so here we go. We'll turn it back around, hand it this way. Anyway, so what we're going to do is, uh, at one point, we're going to talk to you a little bit about this gimbal, this Feiyu gimbal, but not today. Today we're talking about um, why we ended up with the GH4, the Panasonic GH4 camera, how it is an absolute workhorse for us, does just about everything we need. focus of this is the GH5 is about to come out, and for the first time, Possibly ever, I pre-ordered the GH5, the GH5's XLR unit, and the GH5's got a new body grip that came out. So I ordered the whole kit and caboodle just because the GH4 has kicked so much ass for us, and it's been pretty amazing. So I wanted to, as a, as a, as a uh, communications owner, as a creative director, and as a director of photography, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this and why we're doing it. I do a fair amount of international shoots, and what I had found is when I had did adopt the DSLR, instead of having to fill out carnets, filling out these import-export documents and having to prove when I came into the country that it was mine, and then prove again when I left the country that it was mine, and coming up with serial numbers, and it was actually a big time suck, and it cost the client money because they had to pay me to prepare, prepare them, and they had to pay me to go down to the import-export place and deal with all these things and so when the DSLRs came out I was like oh I can just pretend that I'm a shutter bug doesn't matter and then and from that people will you know people won't know that I'm coming in and doing business with these cameras that do this really beautiful job of business so didn't adopt the C100 300 500 didn't want to go that direction certainly got hired by a number of clients to shoot with them but every time I shot with them I was like yeah I'm not really loving these cameras but I finally decided to go the route of Panasonic because I kind of felt like Panasonic was giving you more in terms of a camera company in terms of feature sets than any other major camera company out there so I went to the GH4 and I am still using the GH4. I leave very shortly for a shoot in Asia and I am bringing a couple of GH4s. I'm bringing this gimbal that Chris is holding. I'm bringing a bunch of really cool things for it. And I'm bringing, I'm bringing some really nice glass. These cameras, you know, these cameras here, the GH4 and everything else, these are disposable now. This glass is not disposable. So this is, you should be buying for, you should be buying glass and spending money on glass. And you can use places like lensrentals.com and other ones to buy really nice glass, but I prefer to own it and have it. And I just think that makes a huge difference. And I know that like with the Zeiss lenses, when I retire, I may sell, I may sell off the Zeiss stuff and probably get very close to what I paid for it originally. I uh, went to Duclos lenses. I guess in French it'd be Duclos, but I think they um, call it Duclos lenses. They're based in LA. Phenomenal guys. They declicked them. They made they made these amazing set of lenses for me, and I did that. And um, and and I've been almost unstoppable with the GH4. Nine months ago we had a we had a meeting, and Chris um, comes in and he goes, look. I'm getting higher bid prices. Um, I need a corporate identity video. I want it to be nice. I want the shallow depth of field. And then I also want to spin two TV commercials out of it. So I hear the word TV commercials and I'm thinking, well, we got to shoot this in log. Ideally, we need to shoot this in 10 bit. Um, and then we'll color correct and shoot in 10 bit. And, and we'll just do the whole corporate identity video in that. And he looked at me and he goes, so how exactly do you plan to do that? And I said, well, I'm gonna use a GH4 and I'm gonna use V-Log and I'm gonna use an Atomos Shogun to do that. And apparently, yes, here, it was music to, ooh, it was music to Chris's ears because what did you happen to own? I happened to own a uh, GH4 and had just installed the V-Log and uh, <laughs> was considering getting an Atomos uh, HD recorder. And, um, you know, that's what I shoot all my corporate stuff on. And I'm by no means a full-time video guy. You know, I, I do a lot of graphics design and video production stuff. Um, 
as part of my job for the company I work for, but uh, the GH4 has always been a workhorse for me, and uh, that's how Kelly and I clicked, is we just both share a passion for the Panasonic gear. So, why the GH5? We've been loving the GH4, why the GH5? One, 4K, 60. So, 4K at up to 60p. 60 frames a, a second, which is huge. You're, it makes a huge difference for slow-mo, and it's all internal, you can do that. And it's also 10-bit. Big, big, big deal. It'll be 10-bit internal. Very few, I don't know of any DSLR that'll actually do that. Uh, full HD at up to 100 and, 180 frames a second. So pretty insane slow-mo opportunities. 12 frames per second, continuous shooting with better low light function. There's a better autofocus system on the GH5s compared to the GH4, which could be better for sure. More hardcore, tougher body that's splash and dust proof. That would make a big darn deal. Um, and it has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I think the GH4 may have only Wi-Fi. Um, we don't use that much in the future more. I think I will be using it more. Beautiful thing is it's got a full-size HDMI port now instead of a micro port. There's a micro port on the GH4 and part of the reason for this shark cage thing was to hold that flip and micro port in place because they tend to fall out or break or anything else. That'll be a huge improvement. Um, uh, dual SD slots for SD recording for, um, for SD recording or for relay recording. That's a big deal. Um, you'll also, there are also a new generation of SD cards that are coming out because with a software, the firmware update, you'll get several things. Things. That 10-bit 422 internal recording will be going up to as much as um, 400 megabits a second internal, which is pretty amazing. It'll, when it gets shipped to you, it'll be 150 megabits a second, and it'll eventually go up to 400 megs a second. So you have to have really fast cards. It'll also allow, the firmware will also allow you to do HDR recording. In full 4K, you're getting uh, 24 and 25. Um, in uh, UHD, you're getting 23, 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60. Sensors jumping four uh, megapixels in size, so it's going from roughly 16 to a little over 20. Um, huge, 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 a more accurate viewfinder. So the, the most amazing thing to me is that I, with the GH4, I do not have to pack around a monitor most of the time. If I fire it up and I look through that viewfinder, I actually have peaking, I have focus, I have all of these things, and I can pull, even in 4K, which is, focus is so critical in 4K, I can pull, I can pull really amazing focus out of this, and it's not always perfect. So there are times that it's an itsy bitsy tiny bit soft because the peaking is not that great. Well, the viewfinders got a much better resolution, and apparently the peaking's better, so that's gonna be, I just had a friend that came back from CES, and he said that he tried it out, he played with it, he's been, he's played with the GH4s before, and he said it's, it's a huge difference, it's a huge improvement, so that'll be amazing. And then, um, and it's got, so got a bigger display screen, which is also, you know, that's always a nice, nice thing. And last, it's got five axis internal image stabilization. Other cameras have come out with this, Sony notably for one of them. But instead of the optical image stabilization that you're getting right here with this lens that's on this one right now, you're going to have OIS, so optic image stabilization, working with five axis internal body stabilization. And, and that five axis internal body stabilization will, um, will work beautifully with the Lumix lenses, but forget about the Lumix lenses. Imagine five axis internal image stabilization, which you can't use when you throw Canon glass or other glass on there. Well, suddenly you're gonna have the body is gonna start to compensate for these other <clears throat> lenses that are not necessarily Panasonic uh, made or Panasonic branded lenses. So I think it's gonna be amazing. And that's why Gunther Group as a communications company and as a production company has said, screw it, we're gonna pre-order, we're gonna go for this, and we're gonna, and we're hoping for great things.